This is Portland, Oregon, one of the fastest growing cities in the country. Handball, the fastest growing sport in the USA. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Woloshin. We're at the Multnomah Athletic Club to see the best players in the world, both men and women, slug it out to see who will survive the toughest of the court sports. No rackets, no backhands. This is professional handball. The U.S. Handball Pro Tour. Welcome back to the MAC and the number three seed in this tournament, ranked fourth in the world. Vince Munoz serving up 6-4 over John Bike. He's the number two player in the world. We want to welcome to the microphone our analyst today, the Masters champion, a legend in the game, a legend in his own mind. Some say, Rick Christian, nice to have you with us. Thanks, Dave. Let's be sure to remind our viewers not to try this at home without some form of supervision. A sensational shot for sure. Munoz, who uses his wrist, where Bike seems to use his legs. Look at the power. They both get it from different places. Rick, these are two gentlemen complete opposites. Yes, Vince is uh, very much the finesse player, where John Bike is probably the hardest hitter on the U.S. Pro Tour at this time. Great quickness and speed. Bike used his right hand. He's naturally a lefty. That one just misses, and Munoz wants to call timeout. He's known on the tour as the quiet man. When I when I step inside the court, I just concentrate on you know playing. You know, just don't think of nothing else. I block everything else and just play handball. A lot of people tell me, oh, how come you're quiet and this and that? You know, I'm not like that. You know, I'm just there to have fun. I'm not there. I don't worry about nothing else. I just block everything. You know, that's the way I was raised. I guess my family's like real quiet and stuff. You know? Like if, like say I miss a shot or if, I don't get angry at myself. I just. I have another opportunity to do it again if I miss them, you know. Uh, I cover most of the court, you know. I think a lot of people say I'm fast. I don't jog or nothing. I don't jog, and you know, I'm, as it is, I'm getting, not old, but I'm getting older, you know. 26 years old, so. I think uh, it, it takes more. I gotta play more. Um, I have, like I said, I, you know, I spend a lot of time with my family and stuff. My, my wife's name is Rosie. I have a daughter and a son. And um, I love them, and, um, but I think I got to spend more time in the court. Like, you know, like uh, most of those old, uh, older guys back then, they used to spend hours in the court, practice their shots and everything. If it goes, handball goes up to a, another level where, you know, you can just play handball, then uh, you're, it's better for your kids, you know? Send them to college and all that, you know? Have a better lifestyle. Vince is one of the good guys on the tour. His turn on the throne is soon to come. And he'll get those kids through college. Bet you anything on that. Oh, what a shot by Bike. And what you get out of Mr. Bike there is charisma. Don't you? I mean, just a wonderful guy. In fact, works for the U.S. Handball Association, wants to work to make everything a little bit better in the sport. Kind of a wacky guy as well. It shows that John Bike still has fun after all these years playing pro handball. Look at the power in the left hand. Munoz, a machinist, by the way, in Commerce, California. His boss loves the game of handball. They've got a court on premise, and he gets to play, I guess, during breaks. Every handball player's dream, Dave. Bike has been so consistent from number one to number two. He's had trouble with Dave Chapman, the number one player in the world, especially in the last couple of years. But if there is a knock on Mr. Munoz, it's consistency. Yes, I'd have to agree with you. That was with the offhand there, but that's with the dominant hand. Oh, what power by John Bike in the put away. John Bike followed that ball through all the glass walls, took the ball off the back wall perfectly, and flattened it. Bike, another one of the players who was taught by his father. So many of the greats in the top 10 
on tour today, learn from their dads. Here is match point. And there it is. John Bike advances. He'll take on the winner of David Chapman and Nani Alvarado Jr. So a big hand for John Bike, and we're back with that second semi in just a moment. Crowd in Portland came to see David Chapman, the number one ranked player in the world. He's been so dominating against the number five seed, Nadi Alvarado Jr. We already know one of the finalists. It's the number two ranked player in the world, John Bike. He gets the winner of this. Chapman dominated the first game 21 14. He's up 12 to nothing in this one. Alvarado. 22 years old, lives in Hesperia, California, out in the desert. And there, finally breaks through. Yes, there Nadi finally breaks through. Let's see if he can get a little rhythm, get some points on the board here. Nadi works with his mother, trying to get his real estate license. Chapman, a student at Southwest Missouri and the captain of the best handball team in the nation collegiately. And that is a hinder. Nadi was trying to drive this ball down the left side, pulled it into the middle of the court, giving Dave a, a definite hinder. Call was good, no question about that. And now Nadi Alvarado, whose dad is considered the greatest who ever played the game, has to search for his own place in the sport. You must feel pretty good about that. Yeah, uh, when I look back in the last two years, uh, I would have never even uh, guessed that I would be here. Uh, there was, from day one, I started playing, I thought, no way, I couldn't do this. Um, I used to read the magazine, and said, oh, this would be great to be on the Pro Tour, get a Pro Tour Gatorade shirt. And to me, that was like, that was the greatest thing in the world. And uh, you're right, uh, right now, when I look back on the last two years, I'm very happy. I look at it now as a business. You know, my dad has put that, has drilled that in my head. You have to uh, look at yourself as a, a commodity almost. You have to take care of yourself. You have to be taken care of when you're away, and you, you don't go and do things for free anymore because this is, you know, this is partially my living. So yeah, it's business like now. But when I'm on the court practicing, back home training, I have a lot of fun. But when I come here, it's it's uh, it's business. I guess when I get in the court, uh, I rely on the serve right away to get the cripple. And the cripple means that you get a setup. So I guess I look at that as my, maybe that's not how I should play, but that's how I play right now. I look for the cripple. That's probably how I play. I like to serve and give me a setup. Nadi's serve and shoot format works real well with most of the players in handball. However, today he's playing David Chapman, who by far has the best return of service in handball. Look at that. That was with the left hand. I tell you, he is amazing. And he's won six of seven of the tour stops. I think it's a fair question to ask you, Rick. We've just seen the piece on Natty Alvarado Jr. talked about his dad. Will we someday talk about David Chapman in those same kinds of terms as we talked with uh, Alvarado Sr.? At 20 years old, it's tough to make that call right now. However, he's got a great start on trying to equal the great Nadi Alvarado's record. Look at that touch there. He does it with power, he does it with the touch shot, once with the left hand, once with the right. And, and the amazing thing is he, he thinks the game out so well. For a 20-year-old, some are amazed at his conservative game plan. He is a tremendous tactician. He has turned the game upside down in the last three to five years. He has turned it from being a pro power, power serve game into floating the ball up to the ceiling, making the player play the entire game, not just a short aspect of it. Three in a row for Chapman, who continues to roll. Winner of the first game, powering his way, finessing his way, doing everything here in the second. Dave, it's been 10 years since I've seen a pro player use a lob serve for their first serve. Some players have used it as their second serve, more conservative, David uses it as his first. It's very unique. Alvarado is a true gentleman, but you can sense the frustration welling up in him. Everything he's tried, he's tried a little different, something every time can't seem to make it work. And finally, a mistake. Rare for Mr. Chapman. Nadi appreciates his doubles partner giving him a break here and there. 
Well, you gotta help out your buddies. Ooh, what a move to get out of the way. He is so cat-like quick. Look at the speed. Watch him follow this ball around, keeping it in play. Sensational shot by Alvarado to get that point. Watch the tremendous athletic ability here. Nadi Jr. running this ball down all the way to the back wall, follows it up. Well, he won the battle, but not the war. And so Chapman rolls 21-14, 21-10. It'll be Chapman, the number one player, against number two bike. That comes up in just a little bit. But coming up next, Lisa Frazier and Anna Engel, the top two women in the game. Welcome back to the Mac in Portland, Oregon. There's Anna Angle, the number one woman's player in the world. Lisa Frazier, number two, although it's tough to tell, Rick Christian. These two are so close. They have such a terrific rivalry going. They've had a great rivalry for about the last four years, Dave. They seem to split match for match. In the series, Anna Engel leads nine to six. This is their 16th meeting. They've split the last two times they played. Engel beat Frazier at the uh, U.S. Women's Classic the last time they played in Dallas, but it was 18 and 20. Time before that they played was here in Portland a year ago, and Engel was the winner in that one in a tie break. So you go figure who's, who's on top of their game at the moment. They have played in the championship of the tournaments that they've been involved in for the last two years. It's always been Angle and Frazier in the final game. It's amazing. They've all been close. They both play a style that's appealing to the crowd. They both dive for the ball and play aggressively. It's a very, it's a pleasure to watch them both play. Anna Angle just about always gets to everything. Couldn't quite get to that one. There's Leon Tyson, one of the top players in the 70s and 80s in she, the women's division. She was where these two women are right now. If you could pick a stronger player here in terms of just physical strength it's probably Lisa Frazier but Anna Engel for scrappiness on the court and all around quickness is considered also one of the strongest players on the court both on the men's tour and on the women's this kill shot from the back is what Lisa Frazier is known for Lisa will play offense from as deep as 35 to 38 feet here she shows a right side wall, front wall kill shot from about 37 feet. Perfectly executed. Just graduated from college and will be a teacher of PE. At least that's what she thinks she's going to do. A lot of options for this young, gifted athlete. I think she played volleyball for a little while as well. She can play just about any sport. Anna Angle, you see, the mother of two, and yet plays a lot. And is she in some kind of shape? Lisa Frazier, the pride of Canada. She's from Winnipeg, and I think she's won just about everything that Canada has to offer. In fact, she uh, plays a weekly game with Merv Deckard, who was a multi-time national Canadian champion, a buddy of yours, isn't he? Yeah, Merv's at the same age bracket as I am. We've run into each other from time to time. I think we've split most of the matches we've played. So it makes her so tough, although there is a rare miss. Hey, these two are like the Martina and Chrissy of handball. I mean, there's a, there's a handful of women that are not too far behind us that could be a threat on any given day that they have a, I think, to beat either one of us right now, that they have to be playing really well that day. And But I guess ultimately, yeah, Lisa's my main competition. I think that the beauty of us, the way we play against each other, is that we do contrast each other a lot. And it also hits the ball really hard, and she plays strong, and, and she's very consistent. But she's got way faster feet than I do in the front court. She's strong. Her strength hits the ball hard. Serves well. Has a great back wall shot. She can do anything off the back wall. The one thing, uh, Anna will always go for the shot. Doesn't matter how high it is or how low it is. She will always dive for the shot and make that last a little extra effort, pick up the ball. Whereas a lot of times I just, ah, it's down, she's not gonna get it, forget it. And the next thing you know, she's rolling it out, diving, falling across the floor. So I say her, just her quickness and her anticipation is uh, something that I wish I had. We're both mentally tough. 
just depends on the day, on the tournament. I mean, the physical part is a given now. I mean, we both, we both know that we have to play strong to, to be able to beat each other. It's just whoever's got it that day up top. Well, in any sport, you always have to have role models. And um, I think the nice thing about when we move around for tournament to tournament is when we go into different cities and uh, we play in front of a crowd that has never seen top women handball players play against each other. And uh, I think there's a lot more women that'll get a chance to see it. And that's the only way that we're going to get a chance to get more people into the game. So raising the awareness is, is key. And I think we do a good job at it. They have done a terrific job of making people notice them and the sport. In fact, the uh, National Handball Association just inducted their first woman ever into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's right, Dave. This year, the U.S. Handball Association Hall of Fame Committee nominated and elected Rosemary Bellini out of New York City into their Hall of Fame team. Pride of St. Paul with a big right hand that time. That's her dominant hand, and she starts to get on a bit of, an, of a roll. You see how she's modified her shirt. She doesn't like anything in the way of that powerful right hand or even the left. And I tell you, you look at her, you love, have to love the scrap and the emotion with which she plays. A mistake by Frazier. So here comes a bit of a roll for Angle, who is... Uh, had her problems here in game number one. You look at her, we talk about the emotion, and she's been known to throw the goggles down on occasion, but that fires her up. Would you rather see a, a steadier kind of a personality, or, or do you think the fiery thing helps you when you get to big matches like this? I think the fire and the emotion is needed in these big matches. I like to see that type of emotion come out of a player. It shows their intensity and how much they're into each one of these matches. Oh, a terrific serve. Got the crack in the wall and rolled out. And that's four points in a row for her. Offhand got her that time. Another unforced error. Got to make as few of those as possible in a tough match like this. So here is a opportunity for Frazier to win game one. Died out, so the scrappy mom of two hangs in. Anna playing great offense with her left hand, driving the ball right along the left side wall, forcing Lee Frazier back deep in the corner. Well, she's mentally tough to have come back from where she was down, and there's another point. This was 20 to 10, now it's 2015. And for the first time in the match, some fr frustration in the face of Lisa Frazier, although you can never tell. She never lets her emotions show. No, Lisa's very quiet on the court, never shows emotion. Although you know deep down inside she's churning, on the outside she's cool and calm. 20 to 16. What a get. Oh, she had great power with her left hand. And there's the emotion we talk about with Anna Angle. Lisa sets up, goes for the kill in the front right corner. Anna's quickness allows her to get that ball back as she gets up quickly to keep the ball in play. And another opportunity to win game one. The great passing shot by Frazier, and she wins the first game, 21-16. In a rare blowout, she won the second game, 21-6. So our champion is Lisa Frazier. We've got the men's championship coming up in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the MAC, and the folks in Portland came to see this young man, David Chapman. He's already won the first game of this final, 21 to 8. Putting on 
a show against the number two player in the world in John Bike, who's now going to try to take it easy and maybe go to the ceiling just a little bit. Dave, you're right. Dave Chapman has put on an absolute clinic here today. His execution has been almost flawless. Zero mistakes. He's really making Dave, he's really making John Bike pay for any mistake that John might make. Down he goes, though. He never gives up on a point. You talk about mental toughness. There is a man who should be borrowing your cliche and phrase in the dictionary with a picture there for that. I mean, he uh, puts on a show for all of the fans, and they've come from all over the place in the Northwest to see Chapman today and just think he's only 20 years old. It is a, an outstanding story. Bike's got some fight in him as well. Uh, you can bet on that. And uh, he's just trying to figure out how to get to his power. There is the father of David Chapman. Now, Bike's dad taught him the game. Chapman's dad taught him the game. We've already talked about Alvarado Sr. and Jr. There is great tradition. There's a family sense when you talk about this game and even when you talk about possibilities for the Hall of Fame. Some of the great players in handball indeed have had great schooling and teaching from their fathers in this game. Uh, and many times the younger one turns out to be the better player of the two and the overall specter of things. But the tradition of father teaching son is very prevalent in pro handball. Looks like the king of Sheba there with his headband. He's definitely a little different. John's cut from a little different uh, part of the cloth. Not always the sharpest tool in the shed, but gives a great performance every time. Well, he's such a bright guy. He's I think he was an engineer or physics major in college and has done well and does a great job working for the U.S. Handball Association. David Chapman is a student still at Southwest Missouri, but a student of the game. He'll spend hours on the court playing with kids, silly games, just to try to perfect his total arsenal. Look at the jockeying back and forth here and the anticipation. That is what David Chapman says is his strength. Great hustle, great speed in that match. Both players driving each other side to side. John By coming up with the winner, a dump shot with his right hand down the right side. Well, Chapman says he can anticipate, so can Bike. And look at the size of the legs. That's where he gets the power. Notice how he got to the right hand, used the left hand, and he's upset about a call here. Tell us about it. John's saying here that the ball bounced a second time before David struck it. Nope. But as you can clearly see there, that ball only bounced on the floor one time. It hit the glass back wall and came up. There's a good look at John Bike, once the young lion, but now he's become the elder statesman. Our game is the perfect mixture of uh, physical and mental skills. I uh, climbed to the top purely on physical skills, and now that I'm 30, I'm trying to incorporate a more cerebral approach. It's not working yet, but right now I'm a mixture. I'm in flux. I'm the hardest hitter. <laughs> I'm the hardest hitter here. Specific. I'm the hardest, the hardest hitter. <laughs> I'm the hardest hitter here. I still play, I travel and play and compete as much as anyone. I've never known anything else. I've got no complaints. It, it'd be ideal to uh, only play and play only when I chose, but compared to uh, the world in general, I think I've got a pretty good deal. Top guys got this game from their dad. It's uh, David Chapman's father taught him, my father taught me, Nadia Alvarado, John Robles, Danny Armijo, Randy Morones, all of us got it from our fathers. Next generation, we are all gonna just go out and have lots of kids. We're gonna, uh, the eight of us can get 30 or 40 new top players, that's the plan. Do I get a cigar? We told John Bike he could not have that cigar unless he won this match. And Rick, he lost the first game 21-8, but he's hanging in here 8-8. Dave, you're right. The way that it looks now, there'll be no red hour box ceremony for big John Bike today. Not if Chapman keeps finding the corner like that. And that's the opposite side of the glass. It's much tougher to find the ball where the glass meets the glass. Yes, that's correct. 
However, David again driving the ball. The best return of service belongs to David Chapman on the U.S. Pro Handball Tour. You've got a return of service like Jimmy Connors used to have in tennis. And, you know, look at that anticipation. And Chapman again. You know, he used to be a tennis player. He was a champion in high school in California. That's right. His father said that he uh, guided him towards a little bit of tennis when he was a junior in the Southern California area. He was extremely successful at it. But David went up to his dad one day and said, Dad, I'm not having as much fun playing tennis as I am playing handball. I want to give that tennis game up. It has a little Michael Jordan in him, too. You see the way the tongue came out? That time some moisture came out. I'll have to uh, get that all up. So Bike goes back to work with power. And against the glass again. And he just can't seem to get it going. John's had trouble finding his groove today. David's kind of pushing him around the court from side to side. Well, he just missed that shot. But how many guys would even attempt that kind of a play? It shows you the great athletic ability that Bike has. John Bike on occasion could make a shot like that, but that's a shot made purely out of desperation, certainly not by choice. Bike with the 30-year legs against the 20-year-old youngster. How much of a difference will that make here down the stretch? Down the stretch, especially in tournaments where you're playing three and four days in a row, it makes a huge difference. If it's a one-day tournament for a lot of money, the difference is not as great. But we all know that on a three and four-day tournament, such as the pro stops are, that difference can be significant. Now here is an example of a bad bounce. Player claims it's a bad bounce. Now there will be discussion with the referee and the two folks who are spotting in the stands. In my mind, these are professionals. And unless it hits the latch on the back door that you see in every court, why should there even be a bad bounce? These guys are pros. You don't see a shortstop at Yankee Stadium say, wait, it hit a pebble, bad bounce. you got to adjust. That's part of the game. That's true. I agree with you. The, uh, the aspect of Lux in every professional sport So get rid of the rule. That's what we say anyway. Yeah, easy to say from up here, isn't it? Yeah. One thing about Chapman, he mixes everything up. You never know which way he's going to go. He's got every shot. Is there anybody else on tour today that can hit both hands the way he can? No. John, uh, David has the ability to push the player around the court with both hands. His skill and shot selection is at times flawless, and his direction and angles with the ball is right. unlike anyone else on the current And Now, there's the anticipation. What a great rally this is, and watch how he finishes. Right up front, going to baby this ball right in the front. And uh, I got to tip the cap to our camera people on that one. Was that a great-looking angle to see how he finished it off? Handball's a great game to watch, even a better one when you get a view like that. And another passing shot. First he lulls you to sleep with a ceiling shot or an offhand shot, and then the power right down the alley. You just can't outthink Chapman, which is what's so amazing about a kid who's so young. The only thing we need to remember is that while David Chapman is all of 20 years old, he's been playing handball with his father since he was three. Beat him for the first time when he was five, I believe. It keeps getting lower every time we talk. I think it was originally 12 at one point. Watch again the grace and the finish by David Chapman as he tries to finish off John Bike. Welcome back to the Mac in Portland. Dave Willotion and Rick Christian. John Bike trailing 12-8 in the championship game to David Chapman, who won the first game, by the way, in the best of three by a score of 21-8. Again, Dave, here's David Chapman running John Bike from one side of the court to the other, using the whole court to his advantage, waiting for the setup, and putting the ball away for a point. Textbook. And you got to figure fatigue becomes a factor, which leaves the ball in the perfect setup position for that lethal right hand. And that guy there absolutely loves it. There is Dave Chapman's father. He'll get some advice from time to time. Hey, how are you ever going to stop this young, cocky kid? I think I've brought uh, 
a lot more dimensions back to the game. I haven't just been power playing like some, some of the new pros do. I, uh, I like to wrap the ball around, use a lot of different ceiling shots. I like to mix it up, try and get the guy tired rather than just always put the ball away. I'd say just about every time I, I play, I'm trying to wear the guy down every single time, especially in the finals against, against John Bike. I always want to wear him down. I'm 20 years old, I'm a lot younger than a lot of the players. And I think I also work out harder than they do. I have 10 years on, on the number two guy. I'm not necessarily fast, but I, I usually know where the guy's gonna hit the ball, and I can be there, to, be there to get it just about every time. I bet anybody on the Pro Tour could beat me in a race, but the anticipation is the, is the main thing. It's just a lot, of, a lot of time on the court, seeing what all kinds of players can do from all ages, picking that up from everybody, and uh, just just being ready for where, where the guy's gonna hit the ball. I just have a lot of shots. I just have a lot of shots. I just have a lot of shots I've I've learned from uh, many different players and I've incorporated them all. Everybody's best shot I'm trying to put in my game. I think there's always room for improvement in anybody's game. And I think if I if I keep working at it, I can get better and better year by year and a little stronger each year. I really have to train because Toddy and Bike get tougher and tougher each year. Just, they're improving with me, so you know that's that's our main strategy here is to make handball a much bigger sport, put it on TV, and do what we can so more people see what a great game handball really is. What a great game handball really is. Loser racks. All Chapman does is rack up the wins and rack up the fans. It's amazing. I don't I don't know. You look around here, Rick, and. I think we need to take measure. Is there anybody coming up? Because Bike is, you know, 30 years of age that is going to catch Dave Chapman. I don't see him on the horizon right now, Dave. Dave Chapman right now is dominating each aspect of the game of professional handball. His serve, his offense, and his defense is unparalleled to anyone else in the game right now. Fifteen eighty waited and waited and waited, forced bike over to that side and then put him away. David staying on John's right hand, waiting for the air. There it is, and boom. There's the honesty, he says it touched his shorts. Dave Chapman off the back wall with that left-handed, put a little reverse on it to keep it close to the side wall, jumping the ball away from John Bike. And it counted, that's eight points in a row for Chapman, 16-8, now make it 17-8. The look of frustration creeping into John Bike's face. Both players being real patient at this stage. Which has got to be a pretty difficult thing for Bike to do uh, because he's down so much and there isn't one point to get you back in. But there is a terrific shot. The patience paid off for John Bike. John Bike with the offensive right hand, placing the ball low on the front wall for a point. What would you do if you were John Bike here? A little short. If I were in John Bike's shoes at the moment, I think I would go all out. Right here, there's no time for patience. There's no time for second thoughts. Go with what works best for you. Play as hard as you can and hope for the best. Well, he's listening. He went for a wild one there, and they're away from the ceiling game, but it only works to the benefit of Chapman. Side is out. A great touch killed by David Chapman. There's that easy serve again, making him use his right hand. Another side out. John Bike, one of the uh, few left-handers on tour. 
Chapman has to be feeling more and more confident, though, even with the side outs here. If they go to that ceiling game they went to a little while ago, that's really to the benefit of Chapman. That plays right into, into David's game plan. John Bike, not much patience right there, trying to drive the ball down the right side wall. Just barely missed it. Oh, my, the right-hand power of Chapman. Most people don't talk about his power, but it's uh, right along the lines of John Bikes. A couple of years ago, the way to get to David was to stand in front of him and let him hit you. He used to not have enough power to where it didn't bother you. He came up just a little short getting to this one, so John Bikes stays alive. They love the game of handball here at the MAC in Portland. Great crowd on hand to see this tour stop. 8-18, Bikes serving. Tough shot. And a great left hand by John Bike. Now, in the series between these two, Rick, Bike leads 11-10. But in the last two years, Chapman has won 9 of 11. David has definitely come on to dominate this series. I think John's trying to look for a solution to find a way to change that momentum that David has gained on him, both in the pro stops and in the national championships. He had won five of the six stops coming in here, and he's well on his way to number six. John Bike does not look like a happy camper there. The frustrated yell. And that way, had Chapman hears that, he just goes, I've got this guy. That just missed. Chapman can show some fire as well. Yes, David does get fired up. He's been known to argue with the referee and himself and his opponent from time to time. It's all part of the complete game from David Chapman. Bike a couple in a row now. New hope. And a hinder. Classic example of pro handball hinder right there. David misses that shot, he wants a hinder. If he makes a shot, he doesn't want the hinder. What a get. Oh, first the get, then the finish, both with the left hand. It's almost an eerie quiet in here as everyone expecting Chapman to just walk away. 18-10, and he's just about doing it. He's showing all the skills to the people of Portland that he's developed over the years in handball. Another finish with the offhand. 19-10. Remember, he won the first one, 21-8. Just totally dominating the tour, and he is ripping apart the number two player in the world. This isn't a fluke. This isn't a first-round game. This is the former number one. This is the big, powerful John Bike, now down 20 to 10. An incredible performance today, Dave, by David Chapman. I've seen him play well before, but this could be the best I've seen him play throughout the match. Here's a possible championship point. And there it is, David Chapman has won six of the seven stops this year. The last time we saw him a year ago in Houston at the Nationals, he knocked off Octavio Silvera in much the same fashion, and today he wastes John Bike in two straight. There's a proud dad who just watched his son play one of the most skilled games of handball this year. Fred Chapman loved the performance of David Chapman. And when we return to Portland in just a moment, we talk with the champ. David, two and out, despite the fact you weren't feeling very good. Yeah, I came in, I was, I was pretty sick coming into this match. I didn't think uh, I would play as well as I did today. I think I played extremely well, probably the best I played all season today. Do you think winning 
five out of six now in this tour stop this year, that there's a gap between you and the rest of the field that's getting wider and wider? I think there's a gap between the top three, myself, John Bike, and Octavio Silvera and the rest of the field, definitely. I think I have a slight edge over them now, but uh, if they play well, it's, uh, it's anybody's game in there. But he was awesome today. 21-8, 21-10 over the number two player in the world, John Bike. Only 20 years of age. What kind of future does this young man have? Considering that out of seven stops on tour so far this year, Chapman has won six. Clearly the dominant player in the game today. It's been an outstanding week here in Portland. We want to thank everybody at the Mac Club. And so for Rick Christian, this is Dave Willotion saying so long from Portland. The U.S. Handball Pro Tour.